Great Britain, barely detached from mainland Europe. It has had a centuries old history of colonization and hating France. So, where did it start? The Kingdom of Great Britain was the result of a political union between the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of Scotland. Hey, how about we unite? No. But what? No. But we could be powerful. No. Come on, man, just do it. <sighs> Fine. The British Empire was the only world superpower for more than a century after losing the 13 colonies. But defeating France. Hey, let's go chop off some people's head. Now let's take over Europe and overthrow all the monarchies. Guys, Napoleon's overthrowing monarchies. Ah, uh, let's start a coalition. Oh wow, that failed. Let's do it again. One more. Ow. Ow. Last time, I promise. I'm average height for my time. No. One year later. Uh, you guys might want to come and see this. Nope, 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 nope. After defeating Napoleonic France in 1815, they expanded even more and were the only superpower for more than a century. During the 19th century, they acquired much of eastern southern Africa during the scramble for Africa and Hong Kong after the Opium Wars. At the start of the 20th century, Germany and the US's economies were catching up to Britain's and they allowed Canada, Australia, New Zealand, as well as South Africa to be self-governing in World War I and they gave them all independence in 19. In the Second World War, while Britain's economy stayed strong, it was greatly surpassed by the US. And while the Allies did end up beating Japan, Britain's prestige in Asia was damaged and the fall of the empire would begin. Before we move on, just a quick thanks to Oversimplify for the inspiration. Their channel is linked in the description and if you made it this far, please consider subscribing. Now, where were we? Oh yeah, abolishing slavery. On the 1st of August 1834, the Slavery Abolition Act, go figure, abolished slavery in the British Empire. In Ceylon and the East India Company, slavery was ended in 1844. Under the 1833 Act, slaves were granted full emancipation after four to six years of apprenticeship. This system was abolished in 1838, however. The government also compensated slave owners. Now on to the World Wars. Britain had a massive role in the World Wars. In 1914, Britain entered World War I after the expiration of an ultimatum to Germany. Under the 1839 Treaty of London, Britain was required to safeguard Belgium's neutrality, and this was emphasised in propaganda posters once war was declared, as the public reason for declaring war was to defend Belgium, rather than France, which is believed to be the main reason. The Liberal government of which was in at the time was against the war, but once the invasion of Belgium occurred, they agreed it was a massive violation of international rights, so they declared war on August 4, 1914. They were a leading allied power and they fought against the central powers, Germany in particular. But enough about that. Now on to World War II. The British declared war 24 hours after the UK issued an ultimatum to Germany to withdraw all of their forces from Poland in 1939. In this year, the British Empire controlled about 25% of the world's population and about 30% of its land mass. The contribution the British made to the Allies was critical in terms of material and manpower. The UK led efforts in multiple global military theatres. The Commonwealth, Colonial and Indian forces totaled close to 15 million serving men and women and they fought against the Axis powers all over the world. Europe, Africa, Asia, and in the world's oceans. There were many forces based in Northwest Europe in the effort to stop or slow down the Axis powers, and they continued to fight valiantly. They defeated, held back, and slowed down the Axis powers for years, and these efforts came at the cost of hundreds of thousands of civilian and military deaths. A hundred thousand prisoners and hundreds of thousands wounded and also many pieces of lost military equipment such as 1100 tanks, 3500 aircraft and 70 major warships. The Allies won the World War but at a massive cost. Now on to the fall. After the Second World War, colonies were released one by one and Britain eventually only had a few overseas territories. While they still do have many of these, in 1997 when they gave Hong Kong back to China, the empire was essentially over. 
There are still common wealth of nations made up of many of these former colonies, such as South Africa, Canada, Jamaica and Nigeria. Fifteen Commonwealth countries have Queen Elizabeth II as the head of state, so the British do still have some power over these places. However, they are nowhere near as powerful as they were. That was a brief and oversimplified history of the British Empire. Comment some ideas for future videos in the comments and subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed. See ya.